So as you probably know, Tailwind CSS is big at the moment. Most modern web projects seem to be moving towards it. And in this video, I want to look at a useful component library for Alpine.js and Tailwind, and that's Pines UI. So if you're not familiar with Alpine, it allows you to add these nice interactive touches to your website. And it does so in a simple manner without delegating to something complex like React or Vue.js. And what Pines UI provides is a library of animations, sliders, and many more components. It's a set of UI elements that can basically be copy pasted into any Alpine and Tailwind project. So let's look at an example. If we go to the documentation here, I'm gonna look at the accordion and you can see how this behaves functionally here. What we can basically do is take the code here and copy it. And I'm gonna open up a Django project here where we have an index.html file and we can paste this in. And then I'm gonna start the Django server at the bottom. And when we go to the web page, notice that we can see the accordion here and that is working right out of the box with this default text provided by the documentation. So it's very simple and it just works right out of the box. And I think that's very useful for anyone that's already using Alpine and Tailwind in their projects. So we're gonna dive in in this video. Before we do, if you want to support the channel, check out this coffee page that we have under the video and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. So let's get started. We're gonna go back to the documentation and if you're wanting to install this, let's go to the how to use section. What you can see here, if you look at the head element of the HTML is that we're loading in Alpine.js and Tailwind. And we also have this important style attribute here with X cloak and we're displaying none there. So that's a simple CSS style to remove the display. If we go to X cloak as part of the Alpine documentation, let's have a look at this. So sometimes when we're using Alpine.js as part of a template, there's a blip where you might see the uninitialized template just after the page loads, but before Alpine itself loads. So X cloak addresses this scenario by hiding the element it's attached to until Alpine is fully loaded on the page. And that's essentially what's happening in this section here. And of course we need Alpine and Tailwind as well in order to use this package. So I've copied these into my base.html as you can see here. And we've seen the example where we took the accordion and we displayed it on the page as you can see. And later on what we're gonna do is we're gonna customize this to display data that's coming from the view as part of the template context. So that customization is coming at the end of the video. But I just want to quickly go through some extra elements that are provided by Pines. And these are some of the ones that I like the most. For example, the command element here. So if we look at the command element, this provides a search option as well as some suggestions. And when we type into that, it filters down what's provided. So it gives you a nice way to search for things on a website or on a web page. Another one I really like is this Monaco editor. And I think this is actually the editor behind the scenes in VS Code. And what you can do here is just basically start typing. So I think, for example, we can start typing HTML elements here and that can be embedded on your web page. So I'm gonna do that just now. Let's copy this code and we're gonna go back to our index.html. And I'm gonna remove all of this and we're gonna replace it with the Monaco editor and save that. And let's go back to our page and we're gonna refresh this page. And notice that this doesn't really work as expected. And I think the reason for that is because in the Pines UI docs, it's using Tailwind version three. And I think this Monaco editor is now using version four. So what I'm gonna do is go back to base.html here and we're gonna replace this import. So I'm gonna comment it out for now. And we can paste in version four of Tailwind and go back to this page here and refresh. And now this should be working as expected. So imagine you have a website and you want to allow the user to enter code. This editor provides a nice environment to do that. And it comes with syntax completion. For example, if I want to close the head tag, it's very easy to do that as well as the HTML tag. And if we look at the underlying code that we've added here, so let's go back to index.html. At the top, we define the Alpine component and the Monaco language here is set to HTML, but we can change that, for example, to Python and go back to the web page. And now when we start typing, we get the syntax highlighting for Python statements. For example, if we define a function here, we can return A plus B and that Python code is now highlighted. So it's very easy to change the language here. We just use this setting and you can customize this further with these settings. Now I'm not gonna copy paste any more into this project, but if we go back to Pines, I'm gonna look at some ones that I like personally. So copy to clipboard, this is very useful if you want to allow users to easily copy something. And again, all of the code is provided. And there's also quite a nice date picker as well. So this date picker allows you to easily select dates. We have the drop down menu that we have here and you can separate that into different sections, as you can see with dividers, and you can have sub drop downs here, as you can see. So it's very easy with this to build nice dynamic drop downs. And this one here is pretty cool. It's the full screen modal. And if we look at this, if we click the preview button, it basically replaces the page with this modal. So that might be nice for some kind of call to action, for example, creating an account or something like that. 
And I'm not going to go through every one of these. Here's another one that's quite cool, the marquee. And this is an element that essentially scrolls across the screen. And we also have standard modals. So when we click this button, we have the dialogue appearing on the screen. And the final one I just want to look at quickly is progress. So you can easily display progress bars on your website. And the really nice thing about this is that we can essentially cut and paste code into our project and then perform small adaptations to that code to get it working with any data that we're returning from our backend, whether that's in Django, Laravel, or any other framework. All we need to do is make sure we're using Alpine and Tailwind in the project, and this is gonna work out of the box. Now, because Tailwind version four has been released fairly recently, there may be some issues when migrating from three to four. We saw a little bit of that earlier on with the Monaco editor, but I still think this is very useful and it works well out of the box with Tailwind 3 and 4 from the examples that I've used in my own work. Now what I want to do now is go back to the accordion that we had and again I'm going to copy the code for that and we're going to place that into our project. So we've got the accordion here and you can see there's two properties on the Alpine component, one for the active accordion and a setter function essentially to set a new active accordion. And then within the elements itself, we have a div here. And for each accordion, we have this div with some more X data. So essentially a new Alpine component. And each one of these has an ID property. And that uses this special ID function in Alpine to generate a unique ID for this particular Alpine component. Now what I want to do is instead of hard coding these, I want to customize what's shown on the page. And I want to do that using data that's coming back from our view. So we have this simple view here. It's got no context whatsoever. What I'm going to do above this method here is define some data. So we have accordion data here and it's not coming from the database, although it probably would in a real application. It's essentially a list of dictionaries and each dictionary has a title and a description key. And we want to use these in our template. So what we're going to do is add it to the context. So in this context dictionary, let's create a key called accordion data and set it equal to that list of dictionaries. And we now want to save this and go back to index.html and each one of these divs here essentially represents one element on the accordion. So this one here is for the header, what is pines? And if we go back to the page here, you can see that at the top. So we want to replace these and we want to generalize it to use that data from the back end. So what I'm gonna do is take the other two divs here and remove them from the page. So we're gonna remove these two here and we're gonna generalize this one at the top. So let me tab this over. And we're gonna create one of these for each element in the data coming from the context. So let's create a template for loop here. And let's say for each accordion in the accordion data from the back end, what we want to do is render this out. So if we go to the bottom here, we can end that template for loop at the bottom. So let's save this and go back to the page. And we're gonna see that this has changed. We now have four elements because there's four defined in that back end data, but it's not actually using the data from those at the moment. So it's just repeating the same element. We can now go back, if we click VS Code, go back to this component. And for each accordion, we are going to generate that unique ID. But we're going to change the header here. So what I'm going to do is reference the accordion in the for loop. And that has a dot title attribute. If we save that and go back to the page, we're going to see that the titles have updated. And we just now need to update the description. So again, let's go back to the page. And we're going to target this. And it's going to be accordion dot description. So let's now save this and go back here and refresh the page. And now we can see we get the description for Tailwind and for Alpine respectively. And each one of these has its own description. So we now have a nice accordion that works out of the box and we've copied that from the Pines documentation. And we're replacing some of the hard coded data with our own data here. Now, how does it actually work? If we look at the title here, that is actually part of a button. And when we click that button, we're setting the active accordion in this outer Alpine component to the ID of this given inner component. So each accordion element has its own ID uniquely generated by the Alpine ID function. And every time we click one of the headers, it's gonna set that accordion ID in the outer component. And then if we look at the div that shows the description for each one of these accordions, that has an X show attribute, and it's only gonna show the description if the active accordion is equal to the ID of this accordion. And yes, I'm saying accordion a lot in this video, but I hope this logic makes sense. It's very simple. We've copy pasted it from Pines and we can adapt that very easily and embed it into our page. And then we have this nice simple accordion. And of course we can then change some of the styling. We could change the text size, the text color and so on to make it look better. But out of the box, it provides us with this. And I think that's pretty nice and it's nice and interactive. So that's been a super basic intro to Pines UI, which is a nice component library for Alpine and Tailwind CSS. And it allows you to copy paste code from different components, place it into your site and adjust it accordingly.
Now, if you found this content useful and you want to support the channel, check out our Coffee page. And thanks very much to everyone that's contributed to this. And if you have any other component libraries in Alpine or Tailwind that you want to see, let me know in the comments and we'll consider making more videos on these topics. So thanks again for watching, give the video a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video.